this morning is Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters foam, roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city, it shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice and the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth and breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. This is the word of the Lord. The second lesson is from Romans chapter 3, verses 19 through 28. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced. The whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law. For though the law, for though the law comes, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, irrespective of the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God, through faith in Jesus Christ, for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are not justified by God's gift through the, redemp through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he has passed over the sins previously committed. At the present time, he himself is righteous, and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then, what becomes a boasting, it is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. This is the word of the Lord. And
disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham, and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying, You will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, Christ. You may be seated. Brothers and sisters, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, as Pastor Kendall said, today we celebrate Reformation Sunday. So happy Reformation Sunday to you all. Today we're, we get to kind of celebrate our heritage a little bit, sing some hymns that are, as Kendall said, 500 plus years old. Today we celebrate Reformation Sunday, and I think it's only fitting that we celebrate the question that Luther was probably most famous for, what does this mean? This is the famous Lutheran question, and like I said, I think it's fitting that we ask it today. It's the question that really started the Reformation. It's the question that's in our Gospel text. Did you notice that? And it's the question that we should ask when we read the Bible. It's the question that pastors ask when they get ready to prepare a sermon. What does this mean? Today we celebrate Reformation Sunday, the day when Martin Luther nailed his 95 theses to the castle church door in Wittenberg, Germany. We're talking about Martin Luther, the German monk, back in the 1500s, not Martin Luther King Jr., the civil rights activist. Very different people. I have to tell you that growing up, I never really understood what the big deal was about Martin Luther. I know we named our church, we were a Lutheran church, and so there must have been something important about him, but I guess I never really knew why he was so important. What did he do? And then in high school, we watched a movie that I, all, I recommend that you all watch if you haven't seen it, and it's called Luther. It came out in 2003. It stars Joseph Fiennes and Sir Peter, Sir Peter Usnov, who I find to be absolutely hilarious in that movie. But if you haven't seen it, I recommend you check it out because it's a great picture of what was happening during this time. What Martin Luther was doing that started this thing that we call the Reformation. So I watched this movie and I realized Martin Luther was a total rebel. He was absolutely a rebel. His actions 500 years ago were radical, revolutionary. And not only that, but he was a huge underdog. He was going up against one of the most, if not the most powerful institution in the entire world, the Roman Catholic Church. I began to really appreciate and value my faith tradition after seeing this movie and realizing what it is that Luther had done. The conviction that he had to seek a deeper meaning, the guts to stand up to the Catholic Church, the courage to say, here I stand, I can do no other, in the face of being burned at the stake. This was a huge deal. It was a reformation to discover and free the gospel from the rules that we as humans have placed on it, that limited the gospel. So in our gospel text today, we hear about this idea of freedom. Jesus is talking to some of those who have been following him, and he begins to talk about truth and freedom, and he says, the truth will make you free. His followers ask, what does this mean? There's a theme to this. What does this mean? Jesus 
tells them, and anyone who is in sin is a slave to sin. But if you are in the Son, the Son will truly make you free. Good, I'm glad you cleared things up, Jesus. That's so much more clear to everyone. What does this mean? If you are in the Son, you will be free indeed. What does this mean? Today is also the Sunday that we celebrate our confirmands and their confession of faith. Our 11 confirmands have been, had three years of confirmation, and they've probably been asking this very question, what does this mean? But the question doesn't stop at confirmation. Confirmation does not bring an end to that question. We don't all of a sudden know the answers to the question. And my prayer is that for our confirmants today, that they would continue to ask this question, and that they would continue to wonder about this God. You see, it's because of this freedom, being in the Son, that we ask this question. It's the very freedom that Jesus is talking about, the freedom of the gospel, the good news. This question is the freedom that Luther discovered when reading the Romans text that we have for today. And Luther read that we are saved by grace through faith and not by our good works. <coughs> for Luther and for us, this is true freedom. You see, Luther was so concerned about his salvation and all of the good things that he had to do in order to fulfill what the law said. He became so depressed and distraught, he couldn't do it. As hard as he tried, he could not do everything that the law required. And he was worried because this was his salvation at stake. The Bible says that we are to love God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and with all our strength, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. And Luther realized we can't do it. No matter how hard we try, we can't live up to that 100% of the time. No matter how hard we try, we all fall short. No matter how hard we try, we cannot save ourselves. That doesn't mean that we should give up trying to do good things. We may not be able to save ourselves, but the Spirit continues to work in us, helping us to love God and helping us to love our neighbors. But we can't do it. We need grace. And here in the Romans text, we see that Luther says, we are saved by grace through faith. And this is the freedom of the gospel. It is this freedom that we clutch and we cling to. Because it's the only thing that gives us hope. We cling to grace. And this is freedom. It is freedom because we no longer have to rely on our own power, our own ability, or our own will to save ourselves. So if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. And in baptism, we are claimed as children of God. We are in the Son, the body of Christ. And in communion, we are reminded of what we cling to, the very thing that gives us freedom, grace. Is that the table that we are reminded that we are saved by grace and not by what we have done? And according to legend, Luther once said, so when the devil throws your sins in your face and declares that you deserve death and hell, tell him this, I admit that I deserve death and hell, so what? For I know one who suffered and made satisfaction on my behalf. His name is Jesus Christ, Son of God, and where he is, there shall I shall be also. If you are in the Son, 
you shall be free indeed. This is freedom, because we know what we deserve, but thank God for His Son that we do not get what we would deserve. We are reminded of our guilt, and yet we can simply point to Christ and say, take it up with Him. He says, I am forgiven. I am declared righteous. So today we celebrate freedom. We celebrate courage. We celebrate the question, what does this mean? This question continues to stay with us as we read and interpret and discern what God has done, what God is doing, and what God will do because what God has, prom what God has promised to do. <coughs> In our ever-changing world, the question remains the same. What does this mean? What does it mean that we are saved by grace through faith? What does it mean that we are free in the Son? What does it mean that we are made free in Christ through grace? And sometimes there are answers. Sometimes the answers just lead to more questions, and sometimes the answer remains a mystery, and that's okay. But through the freedom we have in Christ, we must never be afraid to ask, what does this mean? <laughs> Happy Reformation.